Good evening and welcome to Rinkside with Red Hockey. Tonight's game is the Telford Tigers versus the Swindon Wildcats and we're joined by Red Hockey CEO Wayne Scholes. Welcome to Telford. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, thank you. Now, it's the start of the season and the results haven't quite gone the way that maybe you might like to start with. Well, I think, yeah, they definitely haven't gone the way I'd like. I mean, they've kind of gone as you expect in the sense that, you know, you've you have to sort of expect the unexpected in, in hockey, it's sport in general, I think it's just the way it is. So I think, um, yeah, I wish we'd won more. <laughs> yeah, no I can question. imagine that. I'm a fan, you know, so I wish we'd won more, but I'm um, not stressed about it. But as the, as the CEO, as, as a businessman, you're used to being in control of a lot of elements. Sport has that undetermined element of yeah. players and form and luck. How do you, as a person, deal with that? Because fans are always very emotional people. Yeah, and, and for me, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because I'm a fan. So, so you know, I, I sit there watching or listening to the commentary and, and freaking out. As a fan, I'm sitting there going, this is so not cool, this yeah. is not what I expected. But on the other hand, you know, you have to take a step back and say, look, the reality of business is that you don't know what you don't know. And we've had that conversation before where, it, you know, it really is about, I don't know what I don't know. So I think in our businesses, we always plan for the unexpected. We always say, look, there will always be something happening that you just can't plan for. So I look at our own structure here and I say, okay, do we have the right coach? Yes. Do we have the right players? Yes. Do we have the right setup behind them? Yes. Do we have you know, a good set of fans that are loyal and dedicated, um, you know, that aren't going to panic? Yeah. But I think it's important for fans to realise that unless we put this sustainability model in place for all the teams, where they're all improving, then we're just going to be a great team, the best team in the league, beating everyone week in, week out, and it will do nothing for the sustainability, for the long-term viability of Telford Tigers. So that's why, for me, do I want the rest of the teams playing excellent hockey and raising their game and being better than um, than they than they were last season? Absolutely, I, I definitely do. Do I want them to challenge us every week? Of course I do. Do I want them to beat us? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I totally want to win every week as a fan. But if we lose occasionally, it means the job is working. It means the right. plan is working. It means that the overall structure of hockey is improving, and that's what we want. On that note, I will let you take your seat in the rink and we'll take a look at tonight's action as the Telford Tigers take on the Swindon Wildcats. Last night in Guildford, quite a tough game for Telford, Alan. It was a tough game last night. We saw uh, what we've seen week in, week out. They went to goal down within 30 seconds of the start of the game last night and really it was uphill from there. There was no way back. Now, it was quite a confidence boost uh, for Swindon taking on Sheffield and clocking up, what, 11 goals? It's an unusual score and as you rightly say, a confidence boost. They'll come into tonight's game riding on that high uh, and it shows what I know I predicted that uh, to be a Sheffield win so there we go let's have a chat to Jason Silverthorne ahead of tonight's game so Jason welcome back onto the ice how are you feeling yeah good uh, everything's coming together starting to feel better and better each game so looking forward to tonight started last week's home debut with a goal on 3 minutes 16 seconds all the games haven't quite been going how you wanted but hopefully things will start to click in place now yeah uh, looking for a bounce here or there uh, just need to keep up our work ethic and play a little bit smarter and, and hopefully things will go in the net for us good luck with tonight's game cheers guys Side with red hockey, the players line up for the first period. Referee Miller drops the puck. Peter Zabo wins the draw over to Hill. Hill backhands it back down into his own end. Maynard picks it up behind the net and sets out the first breakout. Hill tries to force the play. Goes up to Fuccini. On the blue line. Ooh. Ryman goes in, makes a shot. Gospel saves it. Goes behind the net and Swindon maintain possession. There was a clear target up in the top right corner there, and Sam did well to pick that out. And Gospel again makes the save. This time it was a wrist shot. And, and he now gives it away. Plant picks it up, winds oh, up for the shot, fakes, takes it around to the right shot, and shoots across into Stevie Lyle and loses the puck. Swindon scoop it out from in front of Stevie Lyle and send it down the ice for icing. Zajac now, we're at Telford on the power play. They've got Babrea up on the point with Zajac. Silverthorne it's goes there. in front, it's come to, oh. tries to wrap it around. There's a battle with Zabo, and the puck's loose. And oh, yeah, me. eventually the whistle is blown for the net coming off. But you see, player oh, coaches in the rule book aren't allowed to talk to the referee. They're not allowed to wear the C's or the A's. Shot comes from the point from Martin Andre. The puck's loose. Miller's there and Novak's there. But the referee...
referee Miller washes off. He'd blown down the play for a stoppage, and it was clear we could see the puck yep. between Lyle and the back post, but Miller blew his whistle and signaled no goal and points to the face-off dot. So whether it was because he lost sight of the puck or whether it's because there was a Telfer player in the crease, the puck's going inside, so it wasn't a Telfer player in the crease. It was just lost sight of the puck. But the goalkeeper was between the referee and the puck. We're on the, the puck side, as it were. Five seconds tick by of the power play, but there's still another 15 seconds of this nail-biting nil-nil first period. Zajac through to Silver, uh, sorry, the Silver Breyer, Silver Thorn, Silver Thorn shoots oh, and what? slightly wide to the right, but Lyle had closed down the angles, cross ice from Nell, oh, no. pass, oh. Swindon shoot, deflection from Sam's pads off the boards, goes behind the net, the puck drops, oh, oh, and man. there's some cross checking and pushing oh, and shoving with word. Sam Zajac Sam at the Zajac. back of the net. So and now, all gone the fisty comes at the back. It was a late hit. There was Zajac and the Swindon player tied up, and then they retaliated behind the net. It was right on the end of the period. The lines were right in there, but now there's half a dozen sticks high in the air as the officials are in there trying to defuse the situation between Sam Zajac and the Swindon player who are exchanging a few words. I can't see which Swindon player it is at the moment because he's back against the boards. Yeah, it is Fanucci. A nil-nil first period, but I quite like the dynamic that that fourth line is bringing to the look of the Tigers team. Well, we've seen the guys playing up from the NIHL team, and uh, yes, it's given the other guys, the regular guys, a bit of a longer break between shifts, which all, also is going to bring benefits later on in the game. I think we've had a great performance from Novak as well. He's covered Nathan Salem's right wing on the third line and played centre on the fourth line. And as you say, they're really mixing it up. They're getting involved. They're keeping hold of the puck in the end zones. And as you say, that's giving the first and second line a bit more of a breather. Well, it is indeed. And you know, you know that those guys are quite capable of playing in a league and, and the interesting thing is they, they haven't been around with the Tigers that much this season but the shifts they've had tonight as you say they're all down in the Swindon end and that's great news. And what's interesting to see as well is Taylor and Smith have been playing together in the NIHL they had much more ice time and they know what each other are doing so that brings a dynamic to it as well. It does it's like uh, the more senior guys you know you, you get the psyche between the two of you so you can almost pass without looking at each other and that's what we're seeing from them and they haven't looked out of place tonight. Let's take a look at the second period action. Silverthorne, Zabo and Hill are the line of forwards. Telford win the puck in the second period. Now, Babrea feeds it forward to Silverthorne. He's only been back now for the, uh, two weeks. This is his second weekend back, isn't it? Two games, two goals so far. Babrea. Here Throws he goes. Down, winds up Ooh. from the point and a good stick check. And that's something that has happened against Telford. They've been closed yeah. down very well with players shutting them down. So oh, goes through the, the middle loop. and he pokes at the puck and, and he goes in. in the back of the net. It's it was in. Jason Silverthorne carried the puck through, put it on the backhand. Stevie Lyle skates over and looks towards the referee, but I'm pretty sure there were players all over Lyle, but I think it went straight in from Silverthorne's stick. It looked like it had rolled off the end of his stick, but everybody kept charging forward and the puck has rolled over the line. Hill, down the right wing. Gets bounced into the boards and ends up rolling backwards and forwards with the Swindon player. I think Hill thought better of any form of retaliation, having just served a penalty yep. for the hold against Lydiard. Sensible play. Hill oh. winds up for the shot. McEwen uh, picks him out. No penalty given. You, you, you see he Tom Watkins with his hand in the air, but sadly he's not the referee. But now Martin Andre goes and finishes the hit and the Swindon player hits his stick hard off the boards to get back up in frustration to the referee. But it was a good hit, as far as I was concerned, from Martin Andre. Martin Andre now steps up to the blue line, banks the puck off the board, fires it in hard. Babrea picks it up outside the Tigers team store. Miller at the back of the net, passes forward, switches Babrea side. Babrea oh. tried for the wraparound, but there's a stoppage in play. Net, nets off again. And Miller, uh, Miller is lining up and exchanging words. Is it Finucci again? I think it... It no, is. it isn't. It is Stratford. Oh, no, it was Selby, my mistake. Silverthorne picks up in front of the team store, loses footing somewhat, and now you've got a break from Swindon. 
Ficini on the backhand and yeah, puts it in underneath goal. Sam Gospel. It was a two on one. I think it was Reinen and Ficini. Reinen took it down the right hand wing. Waited. He flipped, he flipped it over. Ficini was waiting in the middle on the forehand to the backhand past Sam Gospel. Brilliant goal. And so now Swindon have got a power play on a tied game exactly halfway through the game. And they've had the upper hand the last few minutes since they walk goal. it in on the yeah, back post shot and a great post from oh, oh, it's gone in. And the first save came from Sam Gospel. The puck came out, I think it was Ficini, and then he shot it just inside the left post as we look at it, coming across the body of Sam Gospel, and that puts it in the back of the net. Now that gives Swindon the power play goal on just seven seconds of that power play. Swindon, to be fair to them, are defending well. We'll have a look at more ice hockey action straight after the break. Welcome back to Ringside with Red Hockey. The Telford Tigers take on the Swindon Wildcats. And now Swindon take the puck around the net. Lydiard banks it off the board, sends it all the way down. Ice is washed off by the linesman. So this is a golden opportunity now for the Tigers to get it back level. 34 minutes and 15 seconds. Swindon Wildcats pick up a penalty. The power play line comes back out. Silverthorne shoots from the slot. And a blocker save from Lyle. Zajac behind the net. Hill. Backhands it through, Zabo walks it in, it bounces around. Zabo picks it up, Zajac picks it up to Babrea, gives it back, one-timer, bobbles through a lot of traffic in front of Stevie Lyle, bounces off a couple of players into the corner, Silverthorne up to Zajac, across for the one-timer, but there it is. Comes across in the other direction, Babrea wasn't quite ready for it, gave it back to Zajac, who made the one-time shot. It's a bit scrappy in Telford's own end, but Zajac retains control. Feeds it to They're looking a bit tired now. Yeah. I'd like to see the other line out there. Silverthorne. There's a lot of pressure on this line to get a goal, you know. Yeah. They've got to... Lyle, Lyle passes it out. Ryan hits the halfway line. But Ooh. sends a bouncer, as it were, onto Sam Gospel. He saves it. But Brea picks up the puck behind the net, puts it left wing. And look, Silverthorne's just run out of energy. Get off. Just to explain and those bounces, it's like a rugby ball that could go anywhere and Sam yeah. Gospel quite rightly drops down and tries to be as wide as possible. You've got to get your body behind it in yeah. case it bounces over your pad. Yeah. Novak hits the blue line. He follows runs through. Runs into Lydiard. He pushes and forces his way through, keeps possession of the puck and now Plant backhands it to Miller. Miller walks in, shoots. Novak gets dumped off the puck in front of Stevie Lyle. And there's three guys the around Miller. The defensemen are pushing Miller out of the way. But Novak goes over to the referee because he pretty much got dumped out of that yep. slot. Nothing called. Nah. And now Ryan oh. and Novak. Now yes. Novak must, must maintain. He's, he's played it's a great game. game. Yeah. He's been involved in the plays. He, he can't be getting chucked out on silly penalties no. here. We he's playing a really crucial role in the Tigers game. And he mustn't lose it. Nine seconds left in the second period. Taking a time to start. Here we yeah. go. Babrea tries to get the pass through but comes back to him now. Babrea's still lining up in D. Yep. They've still, oh no, Zajac's out there as well. And the end of the second period is the Telford Tigers 1, Swindon Wildcats 2. So looking at the stats of the second period, Telford, they had the possession, they had the shots on goal, but somehow they came up two down to one in Swindon's favour. We're seeing this time and time again. I don't know how yeah. much we can talk about it. Telford are owning games. They're getting the majority of the power plays and they're not converting. It's as simple as that. The energy levels, obviously, when, when you concede a goal, it, it's easy for the energy levels to drop. What can Tom do or say to the guys to give them that level of enthusiasm that they had at the start of that second period, coming out in the third? I, I really don't know what the answer is. You know, it, it, it is, it's a psychological thing. Your head goes down because you've been scored against, but this is what shows a good team from an average team. And Tom yeah. has got to get something instilled into these guys. It's OK, it's, it's one goal, let's forget about it, crack on, continue the way we were playing. We saw Telford pick up there after they took yeah. that lead. And yeah. I, I even mentioned in the commentary they looked like a different team for about five to ten minutes. And then the equaliser came and the heads went down and yeah. they went back to the same old selves again. So hopefully the Telford Tigers can come out with the energy required to make all the difference as we take a look at the third period. Let's 
setup. They've been G'd up enough um, in the dressing room to come out with a heads up and grab an early equaliser. Let's hope so as referee Miller drops the puck in on the third period. It's five on five as we start this period. The puck drops, Swindon send it back to their own end. Silverthorne walks in, puts it across the front of the net. Hill picks it up off the boards, turns and shoots and straight into uh, the defenceman for Swindon. Takes a deflection from Lyle and Miller right in front on a screen Lyle. The Brea tries for the wraparound, it drifts forward to Andre. Oh, Wrist shot. that could have gone. And tucks a deflection from the top of Lyle's leg pad into the corner. Plant keeping the pressure on. The pass from Andre to the feet of Joe Miller. Comes across the front. There's a bit of pressure for now from Telford. backhands it round the boards. Silverthorne threw to Miller in front of the slot, but he didn't connect with it. Tries to backhand it out to Martin Andre. And, and now Mel goes for the sh no he drops it. Delays it. Ficini walks in and makes a shot. Plant Miller, Novak, Andre, and Babrea. So they've got Babrea as the extra firepower back on the blue line. Lined up in the defensive position. Swindon clear it around against the boards. Babrea keeps it in. Backhands it down. Novak battles to put it further in. Swindon have got three skaters around him, but Plant now walks it out, gives it to Martin Andre, shoots. And the puck drops down onto the side netting from Steve Lyle's blocker. Zajac, come on. Puts it in front. It is, oh my he made the shot, the rebound came out. He skated after he got the second attempt of it. Zabo was in front of Lyle and it was Sammy Zajac that got a couple of attempts there. But Lyle stopped them making it into a goal. Silverthorne. Silverthorne shoots, rebound comes down. This time he shoots wide off the board. Zajac. Puts it back down into the end zone. Silverthorne now, walks come on, out the Max, front. Hit it. The Brayer on oh, a bobbling puck into into the body of Steve Lyle. Puck goes in. Backhand off. It's up to Zajac. Zajac tries to give it for the first time shot, but Costal read it well, so he had to flick it over his stick. That prevented the first time shot. Babrea sends it back up to Zajac across. First time shot from oh. Zabo. A deflection from Babrea in front of Hill. Oh, the free. rebound's down and a reach from Max Babrea. I thought that was going to go in. And how Swindon well. stopped that going across the goal line, I'll never know. Rose on the point. Takes a hit and rolls it off from Bullis. Plant, Plant comes in around. and gets mugged. Oh. Miller walks in with a massive shot. And Stevie Lyle gets behind it. It knocks him off his feet, but it ain't going in the back of the net at the moment. He was at the far post, but Bray is free at the high slot. Zajac. Zabo. They've set it up well again. Zajac and Babrea swap. Babrea. Zajac. It. Oh no, back to Babrea. Shoots it, bounces, out. it drops to Lyle's free, the puck's loose, and, and the net's, net's off. So now, well. is that a delay of the game the for the referees. net off? The referee's pointing at Steed, so that yes. is a penalty. Now, if you take the net off mm -hmm. as a player lines up for the shot with two minutes to go, it's an automatic goal. Babrea forward to Silverthorne. Come on, guys. Silverthorne walks in, winds up, shoots, it goes wide. It's going to be Zajac now that keeps the puck into the play. Well, I'm on my feet here. Puts it down low. Come on, sons. Massive shot That's from Zajac. And in. the loose it's puck was the line. put in. It's gone in and Lyle's gone to the... I'm shaking, I can't speak. The shot came from the point. Max Babrea winds up, puts a massive shot into Steve Lyle. The rebound dropped down and it was picked up by Peter Zabo. He puts it in on the backhand. The Swindon captain is having words with referee Miller. The linesmen are having words and they skate over. It was Peter Zabo that picked up the loose puck that came from Stevie Lyle and put it in the back of the net to tie this game up on... 57 minutes and 47 seconds. The energy had gone out of this game and yeah. suddenly it's back up there, peaking up it's now. The face-off comes in. off the draw. Silverthorne tries to walk it in. The referee's yeah, whistle's in his mouth. And we end the game 2-2, which means we're up for overtime here at the Telford Ice Rink. So, as overtime begins, tied game, it all happened in the last couple of minutes, and now the Tigers play three on three. Which three players are you putting out there? I would have, uh, well, put me on the spot, why don't you? I yeah, think, just I think, have. I think Bebrea, Zabo, and maybe Zajac. Yeah. I, you, I think so. You've got to have some firepower and a bit of defence on there. So they play three on three. First goal wins the game. If there is no decider, we then go to penalty shots. Let's take a look how this overtime unfolds.
So we've got Miller, Silverthorne, Zajac. Nell, Lydiard, and Ficini. Fenucci. Fenucci as well. Ficini was a musician, wasn't he? A washing machine. A wash <laughs> On the backhand, goes deep <laughs> down into the end zone. Goes behind the net. Sam Swindon Zajac has a get the shot away, son. Oh, my word. And Swindon were passing the puck around. Now they dump it down, but it goes for icing. It's been but it's washed. Off. It's going to wash it's off Sam's. because the Swindon player would have got there first. And under the new... Oh, we've got a 2-1-1. Zajac. Oh, Zajac. Zajac. Gets it back to and, and it was Peter Zabo that passed the puck across to Sam Zajac. He puts it in the right-hand side of the net. And Stevie Lyle lies face down. And the Telford players come out of the bench and jump on Sammy Zajac and Peter Zabo celebrating like they've just won the league. What an end to a game of hockey. In three on three fun to watch, you know, yeah. and it's easy to say that when we win a game, but uh, it created a whole bunch of chances. It's like ping pong, it goes back and forth. And, uh, you know, thankfully we got that winner. Well, I said to the guys today, just, you know, I thought we, we played for the whole night tonight. I thought we were, we were pretty solid all over the ice. Um, you know, they're, they're getting at a couple of goals. They're going to create little breakdowns, but we stuck to what we had to do. We kept doing the same things. We kept putting pucks to the net. We kept battling down low. We created a lot of uh, shots, a lot of scoring chances. And the big thing for me is we didn't lose our belief. You know, we had a couple of power plays and perhaps we weren't as clean and as crisp as we would like, but they kept doing it. And, and you know, Pete pops in and, and steals one there to tie it up. Yeah, I think you'll agree, sport is a fantastic drama as you look at the end of that game. Well, next week sees the return game on Saturday when the Tigers travel to Swindon. And it's double away games next weekend. On Sunday, they travel down the A14 to Peterborough. The next home game will be here at Telford Ice Rink on the 25th of October. The Tigers will be taking on MK Lightning. And you can get hold of tickets by going online to tigershockeyuk.com. This is Rinkside with Red Hockey.